Good morning and welcome to Scuderia Ferrari Racing News. It's been a little more than a week since the race in Australia, but let's try to understand which results gave the analysis of the data in Melbourne and how the team is preparing for Sepang. Um, we've spent the recent days um, analysing the performance in qualifying and the race. Obviously our race pace looked quite a lot better than the qualifying performance and um, I think some of that is down to the way um, the car uses the tyres so there's a lot of analysis going into trying to understand one lap performance against a long run performance in the race. Um, and similarly we've also been looking at the, you know, the aerodynamic characteristics of the car, trying to understand where we can improve it, where we think um, you know, there's more potential to be had, so um, and we've been basically developing a, a test program that we'll, we'll be working through in Malaysia. Starting with the DRS, it's, yeah, it's an interesting um, development for Formula One. Um, I think teams are now all closing in to have a similar um, drag reduction level, um, so you know, people's top speeds are you know, can vary you know, between you know, 20 to 25 kilometres an hour. Um, I think it has made overtaking um, slightly easier, particularly for when you're stuck in traffic behind back markers, but it still showed with the settings in Melbourne, which are about the, the longest they could do there, because it was the whole of the main straight, um, it's still difficult to overtake cars on a similar performance. So, um, you know, you need to be within something of the order of three tenths of someone in the last corner to be able to get alongside them by the um, end of the start finish straight. Um, in Malaysia the straight's a little bit longer and there's all, obviously a number of them so again I'm not sure yet I think the FIA is still discussing whether we'll just have a single deployment or two deployments so it's sort of in the hands of the FIA still of how you know they can still tweak and adjust the, um, the level of overtaking. But you know, I think you know it helped people get through the back markers. It wasn't too easy, so you know it was. You know, there's still some racing out there. There were still people stuck. I mean, we had um, uh, Mark Webber behind us at the end of the race, and again, he again it was you know, it wasn't enough for him to be able to overtake us. So, which is good. Um, you know, Kurz. I think again that is um, again you know it's it's a very useful addition to your your lap time performance. Um, people are using it, it differently. Some people just use it in qualifying and, and it looks like the start. Other people are using it properly all the time. Um, and I think that does, again, help your overtaking because you can use curves to close the gap and then the DRS to, over, to close the gap. So, you know, the combination of the two, it becomes a bit of a game uh, between the, 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 two, the two cars. So you've got the car behind trying to use both to overtake and you've got the car in front trying to use his curves to pull a gap early on the straight, so you know, um, it's interesting, but I still, and I, it's, it's, in a way it's good that it hasn't changed, made overtaking too easy. Tyres, I, I think, you know, Melbourne was obviously quite cold, um, and I think a lot of people were struggling with the tyres, ourselves included, in qualifying, getting the most out of the, the um, particularly the hard tyre on, um, on one lap. Um, I think it would be very interesting with these tyres um, in uh, Malaysia, where obviously, rather than a 20 degree ambient and a 25 degree track, it's going to be a 35 ambient and up to a 50 degree track. So I think that will be a, another interesting um, yeah, sort of thing for us to get to grips with. Um, you know, um, Pirelli have been saying that as the circuit gets hotter, the tyres are going to get closer together. Um, we haven't had any experience running in those that hotter condition. So again, that's part of the Friday program is to try and understand how the, the two tyres work on short and long runs. I, I suppose as overtaking is slightly easier, or appeared that way in Melbourne, um, it can only help the show because you know, um, the tyres make it slightly more challenging where um, they're obviously, or challenging, more exciting I suppose. Um, you know, you, you don't, you know, Melbourne last year if it had been dry, you would have stopped on lap five and just run one set to the end. So the race is all out out the way quite early on. Um, at least now, with the tyres lasting 20 laps, um, it forces people to do a minimum of two stops. You know, there was a mixture of two and three stops. There was only one person that attempted a one stop uh, in Melbourne, and uh, I think pace was quite slow to try and actually achieve that to start with. Um, so yeah, you know, it's, it's a good mix. 
but I think you know the um, you know tire wise it will change again with the temperature so again will it be a that situation in Malaysia it's hard to say at the moment these years it's a co constant development so uh, I say we've been analyzing our um, sort of qualifying and race performance um, there's a few little things we want to try and change and improve um, which we're adding into an already busy test program so there's you know there's quite a few aerodynamic updates that um, we have um, got coming through for Malaysia um, and to that we've added you know uh, three or four additional aero test items just to try and understand the car better. Um, I would think we'll also have some parts to test between uh, Malaysia and China. So it's just, it's just, you know, these years it's a constant development all the way through the year. Well, I, I suppose the, you know, the first and obvious thing is it, you know, it being in, you know, the, the temperatures that you're running in there, you need a car with sensible cooling levels. You know, sometimes you have a car where you open up the cooling and you lose a huge amount of downforce and that's been quite evident in the past. And you see uh, people's performance from very hot circuits to very cold circuits vary quite a lot because of the, you know, the, 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 the cooling effects. Um, so you need a car that you know, cools well, you need a car uh, with a you know, reasonable amount of downforce, you know, particularly there's, a, there's that high speed combination of corners um, just at the start of sector two, which is quite challenging. You know, you know, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's a good all round sort of um, combination circuit. Um, I suppose the other thing you're always looking at in Sepang is that when do the uh, showers turn up in the afternoon just to make either qualifying or the race more exciting. Well I think in, in Melbourne the engines are, well the cooler conditions obviously give the engine, uh, uh, engines an easier time. Um, you know the, yeah, it should all be quite easy to, for people just to control you know cooling levels to make sure um, I, must say, I can't remember the exact power effect differences between the two, the two tracks. With the help of our test driver, Marc Genet, let's go to the Melbourne circuit, waiting to see the 150 Italia in action. Malaysian Grand Prix is a very demanding track for the drivers. There's a lot of dehydration during the whole weekend and drivers we have to work specifically on our physical condition. Also very demanding on the cars, on the aerodynamics because the corners are very high speed one after the other so the most efficient cars on aerodynamics will probably perform the best and it's also a very de demanding circuit for the engine and for the oil so shell engine and shell oil if they perform at its best which we expect that can make a difference against our competitors. How is the work of mechanics organized? Let's ask Diego Gioverno, head of track operations. The condition, both physical and mental, of the team is very important for their job. First of all, because their job is uh, quite hard from the physical point of view, because they have to stay all the day working around the car in difficult position. And then they have also to give a, a physical performance during the pit stop that is uh, very important for the result of all the race. Moreover, it's also important the condition of the guys in terms of behavior and in terms of um, emotion during the year is very long, it's very tough with a lot of pressure. So try to help the team in all this, we have different uh, tools as a company, so we have a gym, we have a trainer and we have also the possibility to follow each guy in case they, they have a, a particular problem uh, in terms of uh, feeling or whatever. Uh, first of all, it's important to clarify that what normally is known as the mechanic crew of Ferrari is really in reality a group of people, very heterogeneous, with a lot of different jobs. They normally, the, the main, uh, they, their main activity is to build up the car in the factory, but there are also some of these guys that are driving the truck until the places where we have to have the car running. And when we are in, in, the, in the circuits, they, they build up the car, they, they are a bit of the tutor of the reliability of performance of the car. 
Whatever they also are the pit stop crew, so mechanics that normally build up the car or drive the trucks, are the guys that are also put changing the tires in the pit stop. The work throughout the year of the guys is changing as is changing the need that we have. So at the beginning of the year, the most important thing is to go in detail of the new design. So using the design and the D DMU, so the digital mockup, trying to understand how the car has to build up to work properly. This is a very important phase that during the year is substituted by the need to speed up the process. So during the year, then we have to, okay, obviously keep on uh, put assembly the car as it has to be, but also find a way to do it in the more efficient and quick way. So this is what uh, normally they, we have to follow during the, the prosecution of the season. The job of the mechanics has changed quite a lot due to the different rules and the different scenario. We know that in the last years there, there has been some restriction in the number of people that can be used during a race weekend. And this has brought every team and also Ferrari to redefine the roles of each guy and try to have a more uh, possibility to have interchangeable people that can do different job all, always obviously with the maximum level of performance that is possible. Technology in our job uh, is very important. We are uh, working in a very dy dynamic uh, system, so we have to follow up everything using the technology tools that we have. In this case, for instance, Acer is giving us a fundamental support because all the assembly is not down, done by design on the paper, as was in the, by drawing on the paper, as it was in the past, but using the computer, so using the DMU. And for us, it's very important that Acer supplies us with a very robust and efficient PC because of the ambient in which we have to work around. For the first time, Ferrari Driver Academy runs Formula One cars at Mugello, a renovated circuit. Let's ask Luca Baldisserri some more details about this test. Let's go! Today we had the one of our stage of the Ferrari Driver Academy here in Mugello, a track completely resurfaced with a very flat uh, asphalt and uh, our F60, uh, so the two years old Ferrari, uh, was very hard for, 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 for the car, very hard for the tires. Um, Giubianchi started the day. Um, it represents for him a training, uh, training day in uh, the Formula 1 package and is a training as well for the starting of his championship, the GP2 championship in Turkey. Uh, then uh, uh, followed by David Rigon, at, uh, for him is um, a different job, so uh, Ferrari for us is important because uh, uh, his experience in a real car uh, complete the job that he's doing at the simulator. So not only uh, simulated car, not only uh, that, but uh, for him testing a, a, a real car, uh, complete his job, and uh, so he can uh, hopefully have a lot more uh, feedback from what is, uh, he will be the, his, his work at the simulator. So today was uh, my first time in Mugello with, uh, with the Ferrari, so it was really good. Uh, I used the track with the Formula 3. We, we test a uh, different setup to improve the car because at the beginning it was not perfect and then yeah, it was a really good day for me. F60 for me was really good. Uh, at the beginning a bit of, uh, of problems and obviously we, we resolved it uh, by changing the setup, so it was really good. And uh, yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy really much the, the F60. Here in Mugello with Ferrari, uh, it was a fantastic feeling, uh, unbelievable to, to, to feel the Formula One, how quick it is in the Rabiate corner uh, and uh, this fast straight in Mugello. Uh, really fantastic feeling for me for my first time 
Uh, I learned a lot today for my train, for, for everything, so very nice uh, day for me. The Mondello track is very nice. Uh, it's a very tough, very difficult for, uh, for me, for the driver, for the car, for the tires. So normally when you are quick here, uh, it's very important because you can be fast in all the world. And the track is uh, very difficult for everything. So I like this track. Uh, it's unbelievable the grip that you have in the corner here. This um, test day had me for uh, help the guy in the simulator to give uh, uh, more information uh, about the moving of the car, about the, my feeling into the car uh, compared to the simulator. So, so the vision uh, in the track uh, is, um, if, uh, is a, a nice step for me and uh, I can now give uh, a lot of information to the guy to improve the simulator. And with this, we came to the end of the program. See you next time.